Justice, Justices, I am counsel for the interveners, Downtown Eastside Sex Workers United Against Violence, Pace Society, and Pivot Legal Society. Organizations that are committed to defending the rights of downtown Eastside sex workers. This piece of litigation that these three women initiated has the potential to shift the legal landscape in Canada fundamentally change everything in terms of sex worker safety. And so what's gonna be really amazing about our trip to Ottawa is that it's this huge journey for us as a collective and as a community as we take this fight to this highest court. Pivot is not just trying to go to the courts and win a single lawsuit on behalf of sex workers. Pivot is trying to affect social change, very broadly speaking. No matter what comes up today, we will always continue to fight. Day, and it is time for our voices to be heard and respected. As we spend today deliberating on important points of fact and law, it's of utmost importance to my clients that we not lose sight of the realities for street-based sex workers. They come to you from a community that has experienced an epidemic of missing and murdered women. A community in which sex workers struggle to survive under the laws at issue in these appeals. Laws that prohibit safety and protection and laws that deprive them of their personal security. We all know that this is home to Canada's worst serial killer who preyed on sex workers from this neighborhood. And it's not an easy thing to get a uh, train lives you and trying to sleep at night wondering, should I go out tonight? That guy's still out there. Should I do my round? I'm not sure how anyone could ever hold up the framework that we have now and say that we should carry on with this social experiment because women are dying and that can't happen for one more day. If this court upholds the communication law, street-based sex workers will continue to experience violence and abuse because of the law's interference with their ability to work more safely. At its core, it's about marginalized and silenced voices and using the law to amplify those voices. But what is most important is that those voices are, are heard very loud and clear by people who can actually do something about it, which in this case will be nine judges at the Supreme Court of Canada. I think that there is an amazing opportunity right now to replace this regulatory regime. At tab five of our condensed book, you'll find a bad date sheet. Many organizations across the country, including my clients, distribute these sheets throughout the community. And as you can see from the information before you on the bad date sheet, this can be a life-saving measure. For example, it gives a sex worker the time she needs to assure, ensure that she does not get into vehicle with license plate number AWKV503. The driver of this vehicle is alleged to take sex workers down to the river and attempt to drown them. When Katrina got on, I was just filled with pride. When they announced her, people behind me started standing up and clapping and cheering, and it was... It was just amazing to feel that love for Pivot and know that everyone, you know, was behind us and behind Katrina. It was great. I felt like in those 10 minutes I got to really connect with the justices, actually, and I think the point of connection was really around the bad date sheet, so um, despite the fact there's so much I felt like I wanted to say, I felt like that moment was really precious. I think there's reason to believe Bedford's going to succeed, but even apart from Bedford, there's already been huge benefits achieved and huge social transformation. This would make us the second and the largest democratic country in the world to decriminalize sex work. And that's a really important, in my view, a really important step for Canada to take as a world leader. <laughs>